Welcome to r slash best of Redditor updates, where a Karen accidentally reveals that she's a Karen who doesn't really love or care about her kids. Our next Reddit post is from r slash am I the bad guy. Am I the bad guy for not sending my daughter to a different school district so she could be in gifted education? I have three kids, Michelle who's seven, Juliet who's six, and Leo who's two. Michelle's in first grade and Juliet is in kindergarten at our local public school. Juliet, however, is very gifted. She came into kindergarten reading chapter books and was doing math at a second grade level. She's obviously doing great academically, but struggles socially at her school for a couple of reasons. Firstly, she doesn't understand that other people's brains don't work like hers, and she tends to get frustrated when people take a bit longer to figure things out. Second, she's just a huge bookworm and would rather spend recess reading instead of playing with the other kids. Then, she gets upset that she can't talk about her books with them. I was recently called into a meeting about Juliet with her teacher, the principal of her school, and the superintendent. They basically said that they don't have the resources to support Juliet in her school or any of the schools in this district. But there is a school two towns over specifically for gifted students from 1st to 10th grade. Then, for grades 11 and 12, they have a building at a community college and she would be taking college courses for high school and college credit. She would have to test into the school, but her school would provide the testing. The school sounds great for her, but it's close to 30 minutes away from her current school. It starts and ends 45 minutes later than her current school, so I'd be able to get her and Michelle to school on time, but it would eat up at least two extra hours of my day, and I don't have that kind of time for school drop-off and pick-up, nor do I have the patience to deal with a two-year-old in the car for two hours per day. My husband works in the opposite direction and wouldn't be able to drop her off. We could ask my father-in-law. He sometimes drives the kids around for me, but I don't want him to have to drop off and pick up two hours per day. My husband doesn't agree with me at all. He thinks that I should be willing to make the drive for her and insists that I have the time because I'm a stay-at-home mom. I brought up the issue of our youngest having to spend that much time in the car, but he says that I could just have his parents babysit. I still don't think that it's worth the two hours per day that I'd have to put in to take her to this school. So I enrolled her in our local public school for the next year, but my husband is furious with me for ignoring her social and academic needs. Am I the bad guy? Okay, um, this commentary may sound sexist, I hope it doesn't, but the vibe that I'm getting from you, OP, is that you're basically a trophy wife who doesn't really care about your kids or making your kids happy or improving their lives. What you really care about is you and your free time. What's being asked of you here isn't a big deal. Two hours driving just so your kid can be among her peers and reach her full potential? Most parents would kill for that kind of opportunity for their kids. And your response is, yeah, well, who wants to deal with traffic for two hours? Ugh. It's always really disappointing and honestly disgusting when parents put their own needs before the needs of their kids. Down in the comments, people are trashing on OP and OP is trying to defend herself and it just makes her look worse and worse. Someone writes, you're the bad guy. Sorry, but we sacrifice for our kids first and foremost. That whole I don't have the patience comment pushed it over the edge. OP replied, do you want to sit in a car with a two-year-old for at least three hours per day? Someone else mentions homeschooling and OP says, We tried that for a year with preschool and I just couldn't handle homeschooling her. Anyways, eight days later, OP posted an update. I found out that my husband took Juliet to get tested for the gifted school behind my back and she got in. After he found out that she was accepted, he let our house... <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! He let our housekeepers go. We have housekeepers come twice a week and canceled my gym membership to pay for a service to drive her to and from school, all without telling me. As a result of his actions, I'm currently staying with my parents and will be getting a divorce. Juliet will be starting her new school in July. I hope you're all happy with the outcome. Yes, OP, I am very happy. I'm especially happy that I called it. I knew something about this. I was just getting trophy wife vibes. That was what she had to sacrifice to make this happen. Not sitting in a car for three hours. No, <laughs> a maid and a gym membership. That was her real sacrifice here. That in exchange for her daughter getting the education she needs. Disgusting, OP. Down in the comments, someone says, 
So, <laughs> this is just so stupid. So, you want a divorce because your husband figured out the best way to help your child? And OP says, he can't make decisions about my life without consulting me. The decisions that he made about your life, by the way, was canceling the maid and canceling your gym membership. Okay. 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 Awful, OP. You know what's so bad about this? More than likely, the end result of this post is that OP is going to win in the end. Right? It sounds like the husband makes a ton of money if he's supporting five people, him, his wife, and three kids. So he's got a pretty solid income. And then on top of that, he's paying for maids and gym memberships. So the dude's probably loaded. And the end result is that OP will probably get half of the money, which means she gets to spend her day, I guess, getting her nails done and not actually caring about her kids, just living her life, being a self-obsessed, selfish ex-trophy wife. Man, it's so... Oh. OP, you're just not a good person. You're just not. You're just not a good person. Our next Reddit post is from r slash over 30 I'm a 30-year-old single woman, and my manager, a 50-year-old single man, is holding me back, and it's affecting my career. My manager won't promote me because I'm too valuable in my current position. I've expressed my desire for additional responsibilities, more visibility to the company, and a promotion. He agrees the work that I'm doing is one to two levels higher than my title and compensation, and I should be doing more and have a different title. But he's been making excuses for five years about why he can't promote me. He tried replacing me with five different external candidates over 13 months so I could move up, and none of them stuck because the job was too big, too demanding, and too much work, even for candidates with over 20 years of experience. He brought them all in at a higher compensation than I'm currently making. Currently, I'm the only person in the company who knows how to do around 40% of my responsibilities. I think this is a major factor in his decision. He says that I can't get a raise to the market level because then I'll be making more than my male counterparts. I've been in my role for 8 years. Does a lateral move for higher compensation at a different company make sense? Nearly every current job opening for my same title at similar size companies is paying 15-20% to more than what I'm making now. Or should I hold out for a different title, even if it means staying at the company for 6-12 to 12 more months? I'm not sure if that contradicts my desire to continue growing in my career. I'm frustrated because I've been in my position 3 years longer than I wanted, and I'm not progressing as I should. I'm a mid-30s corporate manager for a $2 billion company. If I stay in my role at this company any longer, I dread that I'll never get out, internal or external. I'll go crazy if I'm doing this work for the next 30 years. Then, about two weeks later, OP posted an update. This update is a bit long, but basically, after everyone encouraged OP to apply for jobs, OP updated her resume, applied to a bunch of jobs, and she got a job offer with a 20% pay bump. Then, about one month later, OP posted an update. It's been quite a whirlwind over the past month. I gave my notice. My manager was annoyed, disengaged from me, and wanted nothing to do with me. HR and his manager, the number two person in the company, tried to get me to stay. They offered me a 40% raise, the title I want, the changes to the department I want, and anything else I want. I thought about it for all of zero seconds and said no. I told both of them everything that's been going on over the past year. The CEO slash owner even made a few passes at me to get me to stay. I politely said no. They all know he is the reason I was leaving. My manager spoke to me all of three times. He ignored me. He treated me like garbage. He made comments about me. He argued with me in meetings. It was so unprofessional, and it took everything I had to work out my full notice. According to him, I went from an award-winning manager to the worst he's ever seen. How convenient. I heard through the grapevine that he nearly got fired for treating me like he has. I don't know if it's true or not, but I'll pretend that it is. I do know, however, that he presented changes to fix the department after my departure. HR and his boss looked at the plan and said, That's OP's plan, isn't it? And he reluctantly said yes. This jerk-off tried to take my ideas and play them off as his own. Again! I worked for this man for nearly a decade. My coworkers threw a going-away party for me, and he didn't come. Not even for two seconds to say, good luck, to save face for the rest of the department. 
He called in sick my last day, so I never actually had any closure with him. You can imagine how painful it must have been for him to contact me and ask me to be a consultant because no one else can do my job. I told him that I will not work with him, but I will discuss details with another manager within the company. Details are still pending, but I'm holding firm on my number. If they don't want to pay me what I want, no skin off my back. This past week was my first week at my new job, and I love it. It's everything I hoped for and more. They're already discussing giving me additional responsibilities and departments over the summer, and I couldn't be happier. My new manager and I get along so well. I've never regretted for a second making this decision. My husband has made comments about how I'm happy and smiling again. The work hours are significantly less, so I have time to spend on my hobbies. I actually get to work from home now as this is a hybrid position, so we're updating the home office as well. This honestly feels like a dream and I'm going to wake up at any minute. I'm so happy. Thank you everyone in my previous post for your kind words and support. They really helped push me to making the right decision for me and my family. Oh man, it's so funny how he's like, oh, I just can't promote you. It's just not possible. Then the second you try to quit, bam, 40% pay raise, work from home when you want, changes to the department. Apparently it wasn't that hard after all. What a lying, manipulative coward. He doesn't even have the courage to look you in the eyes on your last day. Oh, I have to call in sick because I'm not feeling well. What a loser, man. Our next Reddit post is from r slash am I the bad guy. Am I the bad guy for refusing to change my style at work, even though my boyfriend says that it's unprofessional? I'm a 25-year-old woman, and I've been dating my boyfriend, who's 26, for about 8 months. I've always had a very alternative look, even as a child that got more expressive as I grew up. Colorful hair, facial piercings, tattoos, and very dark and bold makeup. This is how I feel most comfortable and happy. When we started dating, my boyfriend said that he likes my look, even though he himself dresses very basically. He even hyped me up when I showed him new makeup looks or outfits. However, a few days ago as I was getting ready for work, he kept making weird faces at me. I asked him what was wrong, and he said nothing but kept shaking his head. This really irritated me because he was obviously bothered, but I wasn't going to entertain his huffy behavior. I finished getting ready and tried to kiss him goodbye like I always do, but he just turned away from me. This really hurt my feelings, and I can't even lie, I did cry a little bit on the way to work. I tried to text him during my breaks, but he didn't respond at all. When I finally got home and he still wouldn't say anything to me, I lost it. I asked him what his problem was and why he's treating me this way. He motioned to my clothes and simply said, that. I obviously didn't know what he meant, so I asked what it was about and he said, I just can't believe that you'd wear that to work. I was confused because this is what I always wear. I told him that and he was like, yeah, I know, it's so unprofessional. You'll never accomplish anything looking like that. I couldn't believe he said that to me. I was fighting back tears at this point, trying to tell him that my job allows it and that I'm not the only one at work who dresses like this. He just kept repeating himself and said that clearly it's not that good of a job if they allow me to look like that. I couldn't take it anymore and left to go to my sister's house. He called me and I told him to F off, that I wasn't going to change my look because he didn't like it. He called me selfish, saying that I'm ruining our future together because I can't sacrifice one thing so that we can have a good life together, even though my job allows it and it's a good paying office job. There was no reason for me to sacrifice anything. After that, I hung up on him and ignored him for the rest of the night. I explained everything to my sister, and she does agree that my look is unprofessional, but if it doesn't cause issues at work, then it shouldn't matter. The next day, I had about a million messages from him saying how selfish I'm being and ruining our futures. I started feeling really guilty for leaving. I feel like I'm not wrong here, but even my sister kind of agreed with him, so I don't know. Then, five days later, OP posted an update. So, you guys were right. My boyfriend finally came back to my apartment Sunday. No message or call, just walked in like nothing happened. I immediately started questioning him, asking where the hell he's been and why he hasn't been answering me. He gave a half-assed response, saying that his mom needed help with something, and he forgot to call me. 
I told him that he can't just ignore me for three days, and he said that he wasn't, even though he clearly was. I was already getting upset, so I told him that even if he wasn't ignoring me, the way he treated me before he left was messed up. Of course, he just starts saying that he didn't do anything wrong and that he was just trying to help me see how I'm hurting us both by dressing the way that I do. I told him for like the 500th time that my job doesn't care about what I wear and it's not a concern. He said even if my work was okay with it, other people do and he shouldn't have to suffer because of it? Suffer. This is where things went south. I started yelling, who's saying they're suffering and why does it even matter? He said no one, but I see the way that people stare and it embarrasses me. I cried because I was so hurt. He told me to stop being dramatic and that it wasn't a big deal. But at that point, I was beyond pissed. I said if he's so embarrassed by how I dress, then he can date someone else. He starts to freak out, saying, that's not what I meant, I'm just worried what people think. I kept asking what people, because clearly their opinion is more important than how I feel. He just kept looking around trying to change the subject, saying stuff like, there's no one specific, but... I told him that I didn't want to hear it and for him to leave right now. He was saying things like, are you serious? And you're really going to act this way over clothes? I just told him to get out over and over and eventually he left, making a big deal of stomping out and slamming the door. Monday, I put his stuff in a box and left it outside. I texted him that he can come pick up his stuff when he brings me back my key. I told him that we're done because I won't be with someone who treats me like this. He kept messaging me, but I just ignored all of it. He came by at some point and picked up his stuff, but didn't leave the key. I was extremely worried that he would try to come in my apartment while I was asleep or away, so I called my dad and he changed my locks for me. I completely agree with this top comment from Puppies and Unicorns. Him. You're really gonna act this way over clothes? As he's acting that way over clothes. Right? Like, the only person in this entire story who has an issue with her clothes is this guy. I think what this is, is this guy trying to control her sexuality. That he sees the way that she dresses as sexy, but he doesn't want other men to see her dress sexy, so he's just trying to control her, basically. That's my guess. Anyways, OP, you're better off without him. That was our slash best of Redditor updates, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.